John Barker from the Bonner Institute for Purposeful Leadership. I'm delighted uh, that we have two experts on innovation who are going to discuss the topic of leadership for purposeful innovation uh, under the theme of keeping closed minds open. Uh, I want to introduce briefly, and they'll introduce themselves, Tim Bassadur and Steve Thode of uh, Bassadur Applied Innovation. And I want to strongly encourage all of you to uh, visit their website, uh, their LinkedIn profiles as well, because they have a, a long background in innovation. And I, uh, I'm still learning from them. And uh, I encourage you to learn as much as possible. Uh, so what we'll be doing this evening is um, uh, Tim and Steve are going to go through a presentation about uh, the Bassadur uh, method for uh, innovation styles. And um, then we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to ask some questions, but we invite members of the audience to submit questions via the chat feature. Although um, uh, you can unmute yourself and post a uh, pose a question verbally, and uh, but if we have, of course, too many people, we would have to uh, uh, use the chat feature. So uh, Tim and Steve, thank you very much for uh, participating this evening. I know that you are both extremely busy, but we're all passionate about innovation and we're passionate about how to um, create the right leadership skills and capabilities uh, to make innovation possible. Innovation is more important than ever in our complex economy. And uh, I'm just delighted that you're here. And I'm now going to go on mute and just absorb uh, the wonderful knowledge you have to share and then we'll have a conversation. So please do introduce yourself. Uh, John, thank you very much for the, uh, the warm uh, welcome and uh, uh, for inviting Steve and I uh, in to, uh, uh, to, to share what, uh, what we have tonight. Uh, Steve, do you, uh, do you want to go first with the introduction or, do you, or would you like me to? Let, let me go and then you can kind of proceed from there. Uh, listen, for me, the, the, the Bastard profile was life-changing primarily with my relationship with my dad. So my dad always didn't make fun of me, but he was always wondering why I was coming up with ideas all the time. And quite honestly, I, I wouldn't always finish my ideas. Even as a kid, I would build a six hole miniature golf course instead of a nine hole miniature golf course. And at the same time, my dad would always say, you've got to be good at administration and the details and all this kind of stuff. And I just couldn't do that. And eventually I realized that we thought in a different way and it, it helped both of us realize that the two of us were kind of different, but where it, where I apply it or I want to apply this is in the startup world, which I have been in the investment community for probably 10 years now. And I see a lot of random development in ideas. Usually um, a generator comes up with an idea and then it often doesn't come into fruition. So to me, this uh, combination of how people think, as well as the, the process that is applied uh, underneath or over top of how people think, uh, will make innovation happen better, more concise, and, and it can change the world. So um, that's kind of my interest in innovation. And uh, go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I won't, uh, I won't, well, I can't help but I think get into talking about my relationship with my father as well because Bassador Innovation is, Applied Innovation is uh, a family business that was founded by my father, Min Bassador, many years ago. And I've grown up with what uh, we're going to share tonight. Uh, and I've been uh, facilitating teams and in, in organizations through uh, what we do. And I've trained people in organizations uh, uh, in it uh, for close to 30 years now. Um, and really, I mean 30 years. It just I'm getting used to my age a little bit and what 30 years means. And uh, beyond that, I've, I've also uh, uh, worked with my father on the scientific side of, of what, we're gonna, what we're going to share. Uh, I'm in the pursuit of a doctorate. I'm in the final stages of uh, getting my dissertation done finally. And uh, uh, it, it all, everything I do in terms of research relates to creativity and innovation in organizations. So 
I'm, uh, I think we'll just we'll stop talking about ourselves and and uh, and move into our, our presentation if that's all right to get things started. Uh, and so um, for 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 me, uh, just uh, getting us going, I'm going to go quickly through some fundamental framework fundamental frameworks we share uh, consistently that that uh, to establish sort of the mindset and and uh, uh, sort of the worldview that that we uh, that we come at innovation and creativity with. Uh, then how the ambassador innovation profile um, the instrument fits onto uh, fits into that and relates to it, and then we'll we're going to discuss problem solving style or cognitive style preferences for creativity and innovation at an individual level. We'll talk about it a little bit in terms of occupations. And then uh, we're gonna spend uh, uh, the end of our presentation just giving some examples of, of teams and organizations and, and preferences and uh, the, the, the role that has to play in, in, in performance. Okay, so uh, the f first fundamental framework is, uh, is, is around there are three types of change that uh, we typically see organizations have, have to face. Uh, and this is based on, uh, on research uh, the, uh, where they looked at, um, basically the, the idea was to look at uh, what makes some organizations more effective than others. And uh, they narrowed it down to three things. They looked at multiple companies and multiple industries and narrowed it down to these three. Uh, uh, the first kind of change that, that effective uh, uh, companies are, are good at dealing with is flexibility. They react well. Something changes in their environment, either internal or external, and they sense it, uh, uh, diagnose it properly, and then come up with uh, responses that, that resolve uh, the, the issue. Uh, effective organizations are also very good at doing the incremental innovations to their procedures and processes and plans so they become more and more efficient at their day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, and then last but not least uh, is the tricky one, which is proactive change, which uh, these guys called adaptability. This is uh, innovating and changing when you don't necessarily have to. Uh, and so the more effective organizations are, are good at doing the proactive change than, than their competitors who are, who are less effective. Our second framework we, we look at is, uh, is uh, if we call that uh, those three types of change, that's sort of a macro view of organizations and innovation. This is very much a micro view. Uh, this is what we call the innovative results equation. If you want to get innovative results equation for you, your organization, your team, uh, these are uh, fundamentally required. Uh, number one, you have to have the right people in the room. That's your team and different stakeholders. And we talk about that this here. We mean sort of you have to have the right people with the right knowledge. What are we talking about? What are we working on? Uh, that has to be present. It's not enough uh, because for every person you have in the room, they likely have at least one, if not more, uh, problem-solving processes that they, they can apply depending on mood, timing, whatever. And so we need a, a common process. And for us, it's our ambassador process, uh, which is how we're working on what we're trying to, to resolve, right? So how do we do it? Uh, going further with that, it's great you have a process, but if you aren't skilled in it and skilled in the tools that, that go along with it, you're going to struggle to get good innovative results. And, and we always use an example of, of, of brainstorming as a great tool that's frequently misused. Uh, there are four rules to brainstorming. Uh, and most people who tell you that they've been in many, many brainstorming sessions would be hard pressed to tell you even one of those four rules. Uh, the last but not least is, is innovation, the, the profile, which is our preferences for problem solving that, that we bring with us day in and day out. And being aware of those and being able to synchronize, synchronize those differences uh, it will, if we do that, we're, we're much more likely to get innovative results uh, if, if we're doing all of these things uh, 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 cohesively. Okay, so, so those are just the, the framework. So this is talking about your, your everyday meetings, your problem solving, you know, when you're working with, with other people, even on your own, uh, how you approach it. All right, so getting into the, 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 the process and style, we're going to we do that using our instrument, the profile. And so uh, when we talk about innovation, we talk about creativity, we are talking about in terms of a process. Uh, and and uh, to be innovative, you have to do these four stages well. If you're not finding new problems, opportunities, and possibilities that are valuable and worth exploring, your innovative efforts are going to struggle. You're going to miss out on those those new things that are just bubbling up, uh, that are that are 
maybe uh, uh, subtly hidden from view or just emerging and in, in coming into view, you're going to miss out on those and, and you'll end up uh, playing catch up to your competitors and other players. Uh, moving around to conceptualizing on the bottom right. Great, we've got these these vague or somewhat new ideas of, of opportunities, but we, we need to really understand them well and, uh, and define what exactly what's going on and, and what, it, what is the most, uh, the, what's like, what's the most leverageable angle of, uh, of attack for, uh, for resolving that, uh, those, those or taking advantage of these new opportunities and problems and coming up with ideas that will resolve them. Uh, then, uh, great, we've got some really good ideas. If you brainstormed, you know you have, uh, uh, you typically end brainstorming with some fledgling ideas that are not fully fleshed out, not, not made whole yet. We move into optimizing. We're, we're taking the best bets of those ideas from conceptualizing and we're, we're, we're filling them out. We're making it very clear and concrete what these, idea, what these ideas are and turning them into solutions. And then coming up with great action plans, very incremental and practical, that will help us successfully get these new solutions implemented. Then last but not least in the process is doing all of the things you have to from that point on to, to get your solution successfully implemented. So uh, we, we talk about it this way, and the profile measures people's preferences for these different stages and maps right on top. So if you prefer generating activities, your, your generator, conceptualizer, optimizer, implementer, and so on. So I want to get into those, but first, uh, just a little bit of background of, of how, we, how, we, how the profile is designed to get us to, 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 get to, uh, exp uh, to surface these, these different pre uh, preferences. All right, and the first, the, the, the profile, very simply, it measures our way of, our, our preferences for gaining knowledge. And we can do that either through direct experience or abstract thought. Uh, no one is only, uh, only learns through one or the other. We are all a blend. So we fall somewhere in between the two, uh, the two poles of the axis. Um, and, and, uh, and so we're measuring preference for learning. The second is how we prefer to use our knowledge. And for uh, creativity and innovation, you can use your knowledge to either ideate, to take what we know and use it to create even more knowledge, new things, or we can use our knowledge to evaluate what we have and make good decisions. And again, we can do both. We just tend to prefer one more than the other in our problem-solving preferences. And when you put them together, uh, you end up with um, so, uh, your profile, your, your measure. And so here we have someone who strongly uh, prefers learning through thinking rather than experiencing and using that knowledge to ideate. And so this person is very much a conceptualizer. And if you're wondering who it is, uh, it is yours truly. This is, this is my profile style. I love uh, coming up with a big picture and understanding, coming up with ideas. Uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, that's what makes me happy in times of stress. Uh, that's actually a lot of times how I respond to stressful situations. It's think of new ways uh, that I can I can get out of it. Okay, so getting I'm going to go through the profile styles very quickly at an individual level. Uh, although you can ramp them up to teams and organizations. So strong generators, learning through experience and using that uh, that knowledge to uh, to ideate. They're the initiators. They they they're your uh, they're the uh, the the uh, the string savers, and and they'll hang on to stuff because they don't know why it's important. Uh, they can't clearly say it, but they understand there's something to it. So they'll walk around with some things bugging them, uh, maybe in the secondary part of their consciousness, uh, and they're and it's they're constantly kind of working on it at, at a subconscious level, and they're meeting with people and encountering different things to help them better understand what's going on so they can have that aha moment. Uh, to them, the aha is uh, here's what's happening and it's really important. So for generators, if we were to sum them up in one word, uh, we use the word what, right? They're, they're really focused on what's going on. That's really important to them. Uh, moving on to conceptualizers, people like me. Uh, these are your big picture people. Uh, they, they, you can give a, a conceptualizer uh, 10 to 20 different facts about a situation that you think don't relate. Uh, and, and the conceptualizer is going to tell you not only how they relate, but why it's important. Uh, and, and for a conceptualizer, it's really, really fundamental that they understand. Uh, they don't want to move forward to action until they know why they should. They, they need to know the theory behind what's going on. And so for conceptualizers, the, the key word for them is why. Uh, they want to be able to explain to people 
uh, why things are important and, and, and why what they're recommending is, 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 is the critical way to go and, and the way to think. Uh, so it's fundamental to them. Now, conceptualizers love coming up with ideas. They don't like picking from them. Conceptualizers, because they're thinking and, and ideating, uh, that's their preference. They see the good in so many different things. And to have them pick one idea out of five, for example, they'll see five good ideas. Picking one is tough for them because picking one means losing the good of the other four. And so they struggle. They, they have a hard time differentiating between the best from the good. Uh, optimizers, well, they don't have that problem. Optimizers are thinking, but using that knowledge, they, they, they gain to evaluate. Optimizers look at the conceptualizers and say, uh, bring those five ideas you think uh, are, are equally good, and we'll go through and analyze, and we'll tell you which one's the best. Uh, optimizers are, are, are really focused on, on figuring out what's the right thing to do and how do we go about doing it. Uh, where, where optimizers are, are really creative is they will spend more time and energy thinking of possibly relevant criteria to judge these uh, new ideas by, to, to pick one that's really uh, uh, the strongest. And when they're developing plans, they will think through step by step by step, much farther than people with the, different, with the other styles, to uh, think through and, and uh, surface possible uh, uh, problems with solutions, getting them implemented. Maybe two or three or four steps down the road, this likely is going to cause a, a problem. They take that information and they build it into the plan so that when that issue arises, they have a plan in place to overcome it. And so really for optimizers is how we're going about doing things. An optimizer doesn't like to move into action until they know how. We're not going to just try things willy-nilly. We're not just going to trial and error our way forward. No, we need to think through and come up with a plan. Uh, last but not least are implementers. And implementers uh, are, are, are very good at being creative on their on the fly, on their uh, thinking fast on their feet, uh, they are learning through experience and evaluating as uh, as they go with it. Um, where conceptualizers need uh, the theory and optimizers need a plan, the implementers don't need any of that. They to to get started, they just need to know that there something needs to get done, and they will get busy trying things out. And so, if they encounter obstacles or pushback. They'll use their creativity to figure out a way around it. Uh, and with the, the implementers, they don't think of, of, of trying things out and, 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 and them not working as failure. They don't see that as a failure. They see that as just simply learning. We tried one, it didn't work, great, I'll try something else. And maybe it will work. But if it doesn't, I'll learn from that too. And so for implementers, the, the words for them, that we can't have just one for the implementers, their interest is, is in when and where. They want to get results, they want to make something happen, and they will get started without having to worry too much about under, like really understanding. They'll, learn, they'll, they'll get the understanding as they go. Okay, so as I've explained these, uh, there, there are areas of tension between people with these different styles, and, and by the way, teams with these different styles as well. And we're going to get into those eventually. But, but first, when we talk about the different styles and, the, and, and sort of where we find them in organizations, starting off with generators, we, we really don't find them enough in, in, in the corporate world. Uh, it, uh, and it might not be that surprising if you think that generators are really focused on identifying new things that, that are going wrong or that uh, uh, new things that we should do. That are that are changing that will change things up. They're 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 uh, they're looking at, uh, at doing things differently, and that can frustrate managers and leaders that they, that they work under. Where we do find them are in occupations where understanding what's happening and and what's important uh, uh, really matters. Conceptualizers we find them uh, most in occupations where. Uh, understanding is is important. You know, modeling, uh, being able to explain why. That's, you're going to find uh, the most conceptualizers in those kinds of occupations. Optimizers, where a right answer is, is fundamentally important, so things like engineering and finance. And implementers, where things need to get done. That's where we find the greatest number of implementers. Okay, so just, uh, and, and that's a, a quick coverage of, of the occupations and, and profile styles. And, and I'm, 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 talk, I'm telling you this uh, based on, on research with, uh, 
with uh, uh, thousands of people who have filled, filled out our, our, our instrument and provided uh, occupational information that we've, that we've asked for. All right. Uh, now, the different styles, there are tensions between them. And uh, I'll start us off with, uh, with, with, uh, with, with two of them here. Uh, implementers and conceptualizers uh, uh, don't always uh, work well together when they don't understand that there are style differences. Uh, implementers want to get things done. They want to get results. Conceptualizers don't necessarily care so much about getting results as long as they have a good understanding. So implementers tend to look at conceptualizers really and, and say, I don't know why the company pays you. I never see you doing anything. Uh, on the flip side, in reverse, conceptualizers find implementers uh, 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 difficult because they'll they'll just they're just so willing to, they just so want to get started that they don't necessarily think first and they'll just start doing things that uh, don't make a whole lot of sense to the conceptualizer who can maybe see things a big you know a bit better than the the implementer. And uh, uh, by the way, these two, uh, the, the previous slide and this one, this, these are actually what two people said to each other in, in, a, in a debrief session we did with a profile. Uh, they were good buddies uh, all morning long until we put them in the, into the, genera the conceptualizer group and implementer group, and they realized they were different from each other. Uh, and this, you know, so they, this was the back and forth in front of uh, about 55 to 60 of their, of their, uh, of their peers. It, it got a lot of laughs, but it was, it was spot on. And, and overall, when we're talking about the conceptualizers and implementers and their tensions with each other, it's around uh, the, the time, uh, really. Uh, the conceptualizer looks at the implementer and says, you know, if you come to me first, I could have saved you all kinds of time. All that trial and error, all the, you know, all the time it took you to finally figure out the right way to go. If you come to me first, I could have helped you get there really quickly. The implementer looks at the conceptualizer and says, if I'd come to you first, I still wouldn't be doing anything. Uh, we'd still be refining and figuring out, thinking big picture and brainstorming. The second area of, of tension is between the generators and optimizers. Again, they, they learn, they, their learning preferences are different and their preferences for using their knowledge are different. Uh, for optimizers, generators are like nailing water to a wall. Uh, optimizers are like very uh, clear, unambiguous problem situations and solutions that they can then turn into practical uh, practical plans that are implemented. And generators are not that. They're, they're, they're looking for the first things uh, that, that are out there. And for a generator, success sometimes is just being able to finally explain to someone else what it is that's been bugging them. So for, for uh, optimizers, they, they feel we're, you know, typically when they're working with generators, they feel we're finally getting an action plan together that's going to get a solution implemented that's solving a good problem. And the generators on the team are start talking about new problems that, that, uh, that, are, that, they haven't, that aren't even real yet, but they're, they're going to happen once we implement this new solution. And so they, the generators, uh, optimizers just want generators to focus in, can we get this, this problem solved and then worry about the ones that you see? Uh, the flip side for, for it is generators look at optimizers and say they're so narrow-minded that they can't see that this problem they want to get solved and the solution they want to get implemented is no longer relevant. It's only at this stage have, have, has it been discovered what's really important, and it's one of these new problems that they found, and we should, uh, we should forget about that, that, uh, that action planning that, that the optimizers want to do and start in on this new problem because it's really where the value is. And so uh, here it's a matter of perspective. Uh, optimizers view generators as unable to focus in, and generators view optimizers as so narrow-minded that they can't they can't see the bigger picture, and they're 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 in the weeds to use a a, a, a euphemism. They're they're so into the detail that they can't see what's the bigger things that are that are uh, very important. And so when you have these different uh, uh, style preferences in the room and they're not aware of, of these differences, it can create um, a, from anywhere from a little bit of tension to a lot of conflict. Uh, and so being aware of these differences and, and, uh, uh, and, and if they're not synchronized properly, it is problematic. Okay, so I'm going to shift this quickly into talking about how this, uh, these style differences play out at, at, at team level. Uh, we've done research with uh, uh, with uh, uh, MBA, like uh, 250 MBA students, and 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 then other types of research beyond. But the, that fundamental research we we did with the uh, the MBA students, 
uh, revealed that heterogeneous teams, where there's a there's a mix of all four different styles uh, in problem solving teams, they're much more innovative. They're significantly more innovative. Uh, however, they they don't like working together as much, especially when they don't know their style differences. Uh, uh, they have no idea why they, you know, when we did the study, they didn't know why we'd put them into the, into the teams that we did. We didn't tell them their styles. We just wanted, we wanted to see what would happen in our, in our experiment. We expl we broke it down later with them, but uh, yeah, so why heterogeneous teams are more innovative? We, it's because they fight for airtime in each and every stage. The generator makes sure generation is done well, conceptualizes, optimizes, implementers each of the each way through, and uh, but doing that feels like a fight with your fellow team members. They all want to move on to their preferred stage in those activities, and they don't care so much about the ones uh, that you're in, and so it's frustrating. Um, and of course, in terms of team satisfaction, homogeneous teams reported to be much, much happier working together. They'd be more than, uh, more than willing to work together again in the future. It was so much fun. And the heterogeneous teams were, were, were the significantly more likely to say, no, thank you. I would, I would not like to do that again. Okay, so now I'm going to move this into, uh, we're going to, I'm going to uh, share some scatter, di scatter diagrams with you of organizations and then some organizations and some teams within those organizations. And uh, uh, we'll, we have some, some tips to go along with it. Uh, so this, uh, I'm not going to name any names of organizations, but these are clients we work with. This is um, a, 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 like a Fortune 50 uh, consumer products firm. And uh, we've had a, a close to 3,000 people, no, sorry, more than 3,000 people uh, take the profile. This is through uh, their innovation. They, they have an innovation uh, lab kind of, kind of uh, set up. And so the, the lab people are having us, uh, uh, are having their people uh, uh, complete the, the profile before they come in and, and get to work uh, inside uh, the facility. And, uh, but just, a, it's a, a, this is a very telling um, uh, uh, scatter diagram, as you can see from the bar chart, uh, you know the overwhelming majority of people in this company are implementers, and it shouldn't be too um, uh, surprising. We're 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 talking about companies where these are you know major organizations where getting getting their products uh, uh, out to co consumers and being more efficient is is uh, is the primary goal. And uh, it's what you're rewarded for uh, as an employee, uh, and so. But just this is an overall example of one of one company. Second one we're going to share. This is also a, a major uh, a major uh, corporation, uh, Fortune 50 as well. Uh, in tech software, uh, odds are you've uh, you've you you use their products uh, frequently. And uh, but you know, something where they've they've been around for 30, 40 years, and so uh, you know, are they are they still as innovative as they were when they first uh, 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 started out and grew and became that uh, the success that they are? Uh, now it's much more around making sure that uh, that we're we're uh, we're executing uh, as as we uh, as we like. Are right, I going to move into uh, another? Massive uh, corporation. It's a. It's a uh, again in the Fortune 100. Uh, they make industrial and agricultural equipment, uh, um, and uh, this is a, a, a typical. Uh, uh, this is everyone in the organization that has taken the profile in the la over five years at all different levels of the organization in different uh, different occupations and roles. And as you'll see, that is very strongly um, uh, implementer focused. This is this is a, a very much an engineering company, and uh, that that focus uh, is really strongly on the evaluation side. They want to be right, and they want to be right quickly, so that they can take a, a correct you know correct action and get into implementation quickly. But I'm going to take us down a, a level, and uh, I've I've gone into our database and pulled out a couple of team examples from the from the company. So this would be a, a typical operations team uh, in the in in this company, and when you see a team that is overwhelmingly, uh, I mean, it's almost completely optimizer and implementer. When you see this, you know that the, the, this the, this team is very good at 
quickly clarifying objectives and then figuring out what to do to make sure uh, uh, you know goals are met. They don't have a lot of time for fuzziness and what might be. They want to quickly get down to what matters, so they're judging and prioritizing. And uh, the, a major uh, weakness for uh, a team like this is is they won't uh, they don't see the value in extended effort in brainstorming, idea generation, or problem uh, problem exploration. Uh, they the, that that's a waste of time for them. They like to grab a, a problem, you know, sort of get a definition of a problem or opportunity, and just start uh, figuring out a very practical, good way to resolve it and get that implemented. Now this in that company is, uh, and this is literally the title of the team. They're an insight team, and uh, do you, you know, I think I think it's pretty clear there are some problems here. Um, where are you most going to find your insights? Where, what's the key stage for for insights? It's in generation, and they don't have a single generator. And this is we see this over and over and over in this company. Uh, it's a little bit why they work with us. We we are there to de help develop not only the generator capacity of their people but also their conceptualizer uh, abilities but so uh, here what we need is the generator uh, uh, approach the, the generator preference and generators like uh, doing things to expand people's thinking they, they like they like uh, being provocative they like figuring out new ways to do things they hate routine they really don't like it and so they're very very much focused on disrupting the status quo. Let's find new ways to do things. Let's find better ways. It's just part of their nature, uh, and part of why that. And that's why that they're such good generators if when they're doing these things. Uh, gonna, this is the last example that we're, we'll share. This is a product design firm. It's not IDEO, but it's a competitor of IDEO and and very successful. And again, this is a representation of all the people in the in the uh, company that have have taken the profile. And I, I just want to point out a little, they're, they're different from uh, the previous examples. Uh, they're, they're much more well balanced when you look at this, at the scatter diagram. They are, uh, they're, there's a, a very much, uh, there's very good presence in all four, uh, all four styles. But if we go into it, uh, here's, here's a, uh, this is a team of theirs called, they're, they're, they're called the Game Changers. That's what they name themselves or that's what the company named them. And uh, when you see a team that is heavily on generating and conceptualizing, uh, different from the pre previous team uh, where they were heavy optimizer and implementer, these guys love exploring ideas and opportunities, but they are far less uh, 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 willing and interested in doing the planning and implement implementation work. For, these, for a team like this, uh, once they've got uh, the opportunity identified or the problem uh, identified and they've got some really good solutions, some really innovative ideas, they feel the work, the hard part is done. And they'll move on to, uh, to other, uh, they'll pass on the implementation work and planning work to others because they think that's just detail work that anybody can do. The hard part's been done by them. All right, but consequently, actually getting things uh, planned out and implemented is a, is a struggle for, for teams like this. They don't do a good job of it. Okay, and I'll, uh, yeah, so here's an operations team that, that counters it. So imagine the, the, the game changers have to work with the, uh, with the operations people. It's, it's going to be a struggle. This team, they want to get their generating and, and implementing. They, they think they've got something, they can try it out. They will this, uh, think this is important, let's, let's come up with something that might solve it and take advantage of it. So they're very experimental and they're, they rely on their gut instincts. And when, if they have to uh, uh, work with the game changers, they'll be frustrated because the game changers are going to tell them all the big picture stuff and why it matters and uh, uh, not really care that much about implementing. And uh, these guys are, 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 are not, they're not all that overly concerned with, uh, with the big picture and understanding why. They want to get to action because they learn through direct experience. All right, and so the, the, some key takeaways about this is we've talked about style preferences. Want to make sure that everybody knows that we're, we're all a blend of preferences. We have some representation in all four. Just because you don't prefer it doesn't mean you can't do it. Also, it's really important to point out that when we talk about styles, we're talking about a state you're in, not a trait about you. Uh, this is not personality, like the Myers-Briggs or five-factor model of personality. Uh, if, you, if the cognitive work demands of your work, of your job, change, 
your style will change to reflect it. If you go from a sales role to a market research role, we would expect to see your style to change because the nature of the work you're doing is asking you to think and problem solve differently. Um, you can be good in all four stages, uh, regardless of your style preferences. Preference is not skill, and so you can learn to be good in all four, and that's what we ambassador uh, have been doing for 40 years. Uh, again, the heterogeneous teams are more innovative but have less satisfaction. And last but for me is generators are, are in short supply in the corporate world. And so, uh, uh, John, I know I'm sorry I went a little bit over. Apologize for that. Uh, and uh, you know, for us, it's time to move to to uh, to discussion and questions. Well, I'm absolutely fascinated by what you presented, uh, and I've taken notes, and I certainly have a lot of topics for future discussions. Uh, this is fascinating and exciting. Um, so, one of the first questions I have is, what is the definition of innovation that the Ambassador Applied Innovation Organization is presupposing because um, I'm involved in a lot of innovation groups and um, there are popular notions of what innovation is. And then uh, I've, you know, there are detailed books that talk about, you know, product innovation, process innovation, customer innovation. Um, you have the theory of disruptive innovation, Clayton Christensen, yes. um, the innovator's dilemma. Uh, you, you, you have Joseph Schumpeter's um, origins of creative destruction. And, um, and in fact, uh, then you have another notion of a, a rejection of creative disruption, uh, uh, creative destruction, disruptive innovation. And uh, there are some people who say the lean startup method is the solution to all innovation problems and we don't have to do any disruptive innovation. Some even argue it's an ineffective theory. If you have all these different concepts of innovation, and so I'm, let's say I'm the CEO or the board of a company and uh, I, want to, I want to innovate. I, I have yeah. an innovation imperative. How do I, what, what, did, what organizational definition of innovation should I adopt? How do I get started? Can you t discuss some of those issues? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, as, as uh, someone, um, you know, who's been doing this for as long as I have, but also in, in academia, yeah. um, you know, I, I am familiar with those, uh, with, uh, well, I think almost all of those different points of view on innovation and, yes. and creativity. Um, and, and, and when I write, uh, uh, in articles, you know, uh, that there, there is the idea of what is your definition of creativity. Um, and really for us, uh, it is that creativity for the definition of creativity for us or innovation for us is, 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 is really that, that model that I've shared, uh, that creativity or let's go, uh, in a, you know, applied creativity or innovation, uh, is the, uh, generation of new valuable problems or opportunities, uh, 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 coming up with great solutions to them, you know, uh, finding, finding uh, uh, creative solutions to them, and then getting those solutions implemented. Yeah. And, and so, so for us, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of those, those, uh, a lot of our history actually has been with, uh, in organizations. Uh, they bring us in uh, as the how mm -hmm. to 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 enable their people to do the what that all those other theory, theories and definitions have talked about. Right, mm -hmm. like uh, disruptive innovation. It's it's great. Uh, that yeah, it's 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 important. It, it, it's insightful. It offers uh, it offers a lot to 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 think about and to be aware of. But it doesn't tell you much about how to do it. Mm -hmm. right? Like if you're a manager, if you're a leader, uh, and you want your or, you're you're worried about disruptive innovation, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. You know what, what's and, and how do you how do you engage your 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 employees, your team, or the broader organization to make those things happen? Mm -hmm. uh, and so so uh, you know we've we've uh, uh, there was, was a number of years ago, but a, a, an aerospace manufacturing company. Uh, brought us in. Uh, their innovation uh, effort uh, was was two pronged. They they had two guys come in, and they trained all the managers in uh, um, 
uh, in a course called the management of management of, of innovation. So they understood what innovation was and why it's important. And then we came in as the how to do it. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and so, so that's very much uh, a role we've embraced. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had cl- uh, you know, uh, 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 clients come to us because uh, cost reduction is a major issue. Uh, uh, and so uh, how do we go about marshalling uh, our people uh, so that uh, we can achieve the cost reduction goals uh, that, that, we have, that we see we have to meet? Uh, and so... Uh, typically, when we come in in situations like that, we are we are we are working with them to um, have have a goal uh, of, of the business need. What 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 what's the reason for being innovative or creative that every employee in the organization is it's going to re, it's going to resonate with them? I know why uh, I know why we're we're trying to do this different stuff in innovation uh, because there's a real business need for it, and that could be uh, to ward off uh, the bad, but it could also be to take advantage of the good. Mm-hmm. And then, how does the organization structure for innovation? Uh, if 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 you if teams are important, are are you are you uh, changing the structure? Not not just putting people into teams, but their compensation uh, uh, and everything along with it, the behavior, the controls, so that they they know they have to work in teams, uh, and that it's uh, and that uh, they're. You know their their continue uh, continued success in the organization depends on it, and then lastly, are you given the process and, and and skills and tools to use to come up with the creative ideas that those teams can then go uh, forward and and, and implement? Uh, I have I have a number of of colleagues, but also uh, former students of mine now, who are making their way uh, as junior junior uh, leaders in their organizations and and. Uh, uh, struggling with how to make new things happen in their organization because there's no structure for it. They mm-hmm. they 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 I they identify opportunities. They've got potential solutions. Who do they? Where do they go with it uh, to to have something happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, and if and and if they go to their leader, for example, their boss. Well, what does a boss do with it? And it uh, it's there isn't a whole lot there. So I don't know if I've exactly answered your question, but I've talked a lot. I do know that. No, it, all of it's highly relevant and. Um, so one of the uh, just two forks uh, of questions that that pop up for me, um, I still am curious about uh, if you encounter do do you need to have a an organizational a common organization wide understanding of innovation in order for innovation to succeed? I'm still curious about your thoughts on that. Is there is there a single definition, or is there an organization specific definition of organization in order for it to succeed? I have a lot of experience with innovation, and I, so out of my own experience, I I saw the executive team state to the shareholders, "We're an innovative company. We innovate, and we're going to increase the share price by innovating." But then internally, we would brainstorm, come up with great ideas, and then the team would not fund it uh, because they said too risky. And um, and then you would watch the competition. Um, of course, it was sort of a dis- it was not fully a disruptive innovation situation. But you would watch the competition take that space, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, fa- a fast follow, slow follow strategy was. Well, you were forced into a slow follow strategy, right? But, um, so that's why I'm wondering: do you do you need an, an organization wide definition mm. of innovation, and does the ambassador profile uh, is it does it have a working assumption of what innovation is? Uh, we we leave. I think for us, we're 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 fairly agnostic as to what. Uh, what innovation is uh, uh, that that's something that we work we work with our clients to develop that yeah and and then and then honestly uh, uh, before uh, before we agree to work with them we we will do we call it pre-consults um, before yes. we're going to consult with them we uh, we will we will uh, spend time with you to help you define what it is yes. you're, you're trying to trying to do what's imp- what's why you reached out to us yeah uh, and we may or may not be uh, the, 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 uh, the, the best option for you, uh-huh, but you uh-huh. at least will go out and understand. Uh-huh. But, uh, 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 but yeah, we, so 
uh, you know, it, we just uh, we just think if we get people in doing good creative problem solving, good innovating, uh, there's there's going to be success, and it's going to attract attention, and that is going to that is uh, like for us we build that culture of innovation by by doing, and 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 people people tend to follow along with uh, uh, definitions of of innovation and. Um, you know, ways that work when they can actually uh, see things work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we will have, we have junior, uh, you know, I, you know, like not at the uh, C-suite level, but at the divisional level in different organizations come to us because uh, they're agentic. They, they see, um, they, they want to, they want to make an impact and make a name for themselves and, and move uh, forward in their careers and up whether it's in their organization or in another mm -hmm. and having success stories around uh, leading innovative efforts is, is what they're interested in. And they come, they will bring us in mm -hmm. to train their people, to, uh, uh, to develop them as uh, proactive problem solvers, uh, looking to do innovative new things. Um, because if they're uh, 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 a lot of times, because they're so busy implementing that, uh, they find their 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 people don't uh, ignore problems until they're big uh, until they're big problems, and then they go in and firefight. Is that if we could identify these things further, we'll be much more efficient, much more effective. And and they and they share with us the idea that that a goal is they want to be the number one division in the organiz in their organization, mm -hmm. and they want to be the role model that uh, that the senior senior teams come to them and say, hey, what are you doing there? Like uh, mm -hmm. we notice we're seeing the the performance. And the outcomes, and, and wow, there's all these great stuff that we can we can see. What's the co what's behind it? And and they talk about the you know using our our, our system, our, our process, and, and and the skills and tools. One mm -hmm. one if if I could one thing yeah, please. That, that I've been taught um, is you don't have innovation unless you have ultimately execution. So the way I see it is innovation is perpetual, mm -hmm. um, which the process lends itself to that. You, you might implement an idea that started, you know, months or years ago, but it's now time to reinvent yourself again. So there's this constant, you know, crossing the finish line um, to me, which means innovation. Mm -hmm. So you, this goes from idea to, to problem definition, to planning, to execution, repeat. And I think that's what innovation is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and and I the other thing I think is is that there's an, an inclusive nature to innovation where companies are bringing um, all their people in to the process so that they feel like they're contributing some way shape or form because you never know where something is going to come from whether it's the execution of an idea or um, the actual coming up with an idea so so to me inclusivity is it is it also innovation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i just was i was just thinking yeah. that through yeah and and uh, steve building off of uh off of what you're saying uh something maybe i haven't stressed enough about the profile instrument and 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 getting uh, as leaders getting people to work well together is the profile instrument offers not only a way to for people to understand them each other better but uh, to also orient themselves in in an innovation process in a, in a problem solving process at, at the very least and so if they're if if they're in conflict they can uh, may, instead of uh, feeling that they're being attacked or that they're attacking each other they can say what stage of the process are, are we supposed to be in you know uh, if we're if we're at the you know if we've got a plan and we're just implementing and we've got someone who's a conceptualizer trying to come up with new idea, more ideas and new ways to do it. We can stop that. We can have the conversation and stop that because we can say, listen, I know that you like uh, conceptualizing, but we really need you in, in, in implementation mode. And uh, we're all a blend. So a conceptualizer, no matter how strong, can do implementation work and can do it very well. It's just not as much fun to them. It's more labor than it is uh, joy. As for a, a natural, uh, you know, for a strong implementer, well, they they they, impl they, they impl implementing is fun. 
uh, for them. They, 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 it's, it's a, they get a charge out of it. Yes. yes. And so, so that's, it's, it's the idea. And, and so taking this forward, like with the idea with purposeful leadership with your people to orient them around the, you know, sort of a process of innovation. So you can marshal them to, to think, uh, to synchronize and think in step with each other rather than conflict with each other and battle their whole way out. Uh, the, all throughout the process, it can be a very much a, it's a fun experience to innovate and problem solve, eat, no matter how much adversity or stressful it is, uh, to do it with other people because you're moving, you're moving in step and you understand each other and you trust, mm -hmm. uh, each other because you know the stage you're in and you know why people are acting the way they're acting and, uh, you can adjust to it so that you're more in step, uh, or that they can adjust to be more in step with you. So, I, so in our time remaining, we have eight minutes left. I'd like to ask, because uh, I want to make sure we get to the part you, you've generously offered uh, for people to be able to take the individual ambassador profile. And I want to make sure we share that information uh, in, the, in the recording. But before that, uh, we have a lot of people on the call. Does anyone have a question you can unmute? Uh, that would be the preference. You can unmute yourself and ask that question or make the comment, uh, or you can certainly use the chat feature, but we'd welcome comments and questions from other people. Okay, I'm not seeing any. So um, uh, I'd like to ask Tim if you could share with us, and I, I have other questions, but I want to make sure we get that information out. Maybe you have an illustration of how people can access the ambassador profile link. And I can certainly, we can certainly textually add that in the text in the summary announcing the recording. But uh, can you advise how do you take that profile and what happens if I if we create a profile? Uh, Steve? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, so what we'll do, we'll be able to provide you with a link that allows us to. Um, uh, allows the the user or the the watcher of this webinar to identify themselves okay and then and then we, we will send them a, a custom link for that to happen okay. so we'll send you a link to give to the group yeah okay fantastic and, and anyone who's watching uh this uh, uh and and is saying well how do i uh, you know how do i get access simply uh, uh go to ambassador.com uh, send an email in. We have, you know, info ambassador.com or you can email me or Steve, uh, and, and just reference, um, that you, uh, that you, you learned about the profile through this, this, uh, this webinar and that you are, you are interested in, uh, in, in being able to take the profile and we, we can, uh, we can set it up that way as well. Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, some final, uh, thoughts and questions. So number one, I, um, so many issues uh, are in the background that I'd love to have future discussions and, and invite you to, to many more sessions uh, for Thank discussions you. on innovation. Um, one of the questions I have is how does the ambassador profile, if I learn my innovation style, how does that relate to, let's say, emotional intelligence or a 360 assessment? or Thomas personality profile, but a particularly emotional intelligence. We know emotional intelligence improves leadership abilities, uh, enhances them. Um, how does that fit in? Uh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I want to preface my, my response by, uh, by first saying that we, we don't have any empirical data yeah. uh, and research to, to, to point to. Right. Uh, but that, that said, um, Emo uh, it's uh, our our process and our, our style does not really uh, uh, center on on feelings and emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it likely if you have if you know uh, your emotional intelligence profile and the and the, your innovation profile through for our, through our our our, pro our, our profile, it, it, it the, they likely combine and provide some very rich understanding. Mm -hmm. of, 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 of what to do, uh, and what you're like, um, and how you, how you best function. Uh, we, I mean, we have a, we do have some evidence with the, with the MBTI, the, the MBTI does have a sort of a, a, a feeling, uh, kind of, you know, sort of an emotional kind of, uh, a, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the axes that it measures, you know, uh, 
uh, things that it measures, and and we have no re- uh, the the profile shows no relationship with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, this is very much a a cognitive problem focused uh, uh, or opportunity focused process, and your preferences for it. So uh, one of the one of the things we've always been able to rely on is is the ability to remove emotion from it. Um, you know, by by you know, we 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 build calmness and stability. Uh, by uh, using our process, by doing fact finding, to open mindedly and divergently do that, and defer, deferring judgment uh, while we're while we're exploring, and then then applying our judgment to narrow narrow down. And we own, when we do this with people, and we're we're focusing in on what's really important. Uh, in our process, we focus only on what's good. What do you want? What do you like? What's important? We don't talk about what isn't important. If no one picks it, why would we talk about it? But when we're diverging, we, we, we don't criticize, we don't, uh, we don't judge. If, you, if, if Steve and I and you, John, we were, we were, we were working together and diverging, uh, and Steve said something that, uh, that I really didn't agree with, uh, I wouldn't say, well, I don't agree with that. I would look at, I would process what Steve was saying and say, well, what do I like? You know, that, that's Steve's point of view, what's mine, and we share it, and you're listening, and you're, you know, all three of us are accepting both for mm-hmm. the time being, because uh, we're, we're deferring judgment, we're diverging. And we don't, uh, by the way, but what Steve and I both shared might mm-hmm. not really be important. Mm-hmm. So rather than argue about it, uh, we, we hold off, and then, and only then, if, if Steve were to go forward and say, I really think what I said there is really mm-hmm. important. Then I'll bring it up that I, I disagree. But until then, uh, w- w- it's it's uh, it, it it doesn't matter. Uh, we only focus on on what we what we th- we agree we should we agree is important to move forward with, mm-hmm. and we share everything when we're diverging, and not all of it is super valuable, right? And mm-hmm. so that's why we don't judge. But mm-hmm. you get quality from quantity. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 a huge part of it. And so with that, we tend to we tend to not have. Uh, uh, much in the way of of, uh, of of emotional management that's required. Yes, yes. Very. Well, we've reached the end of our hour. Uh, Steve and uh, Bob, uh, Tim, I want to thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us. Uh, we look forward to sharing information about the ambassador profile. I took the ambassador profile and I um, uh, thoroughly look forward to um, future webinars with you. And I'll be in touch. And great, I wish everyone, a wonderful evening. Thank you again for uh, spending time with us. Thank you, John. Thank you, James and Jude, uh, Michael as well. Uh, uh, we, we really appreciated the opportunity to to do this with you, yes. and we'd love to do uh, uh, do some webinars going forward. Get more into this. Uh, this definitely. Was, let's say this is a topic. surface. I have a long. You know, I have a. I have a document with questions and comments and ideas. So uh, it's been a very engaging webinar for me. I ha- I've kept myself quiet so I, I to, to make sure and get all the uh, ideas and information from you. So have a wonderful evening. Great. Thank you. You Thank as well. Thank you.